What's up guys, this is Brad Watanabe coming back at you with another YouTube video. A little bit different in format, but really just kind of talking to you about some of the things that I get asked about a lot. And that first one that I want to touch upon is building a video business. Brad Studio has been around for about eight years now and we've done a lot of great client work for a bunch of brands around Hawaii. And so it's kind of sharing some of our experiences in that realm. And, and just kind of walking through what it's like to build a business. The first and I think most important thing that people need to understand about building something is what they're building. I think people get confused when they first start out with video or photo or design. Uh, and I think the question that you have to ask yourself is, do I want to be a freelance artist or do I want to build a company? Now, it may seem like a small, minute detail, but it actually is a huge difference in how you operate. A freelancer is an artist. They're an individual who has a particular craft or a skill set that they want to get hired for every single time. What we've built is a production company that has all of the disciplines that you need to build video campaigns, marketing campaigns, or to be able to attach to any of the other marketing or brand campaigns that a client might need. So we can write, direct, produce, shoot. We can also do all of the other things from film permitting and location scouting and working with agencies, also working directly with clients, working with talent, stylists, all of those disciplines we have under one roof. So when clients come to us, they can come knowing that we're gonna get the entire project done. Most times freelancers have one of those particular skill sets they want to be known for. If you want to be a cinematographer and you don't want to worry about producing, you don't wanna worry about getting permits and finding locations, you don't wanna worry about getting talent and getting release forms and getting stylists on set and making sure locations have been approved. You don't wanna worry about budgets, you just wanna make sure that you get paid for your skill then you wanna be a freelance artist. There's nothing wrong inherently with going either direction. So knowing who you are and what you wanna be, what you wanna make money doing is really, really important and the first step in figuring out if you want to build a video business. So once you figure out what kind of business you want to be, you have to figure out what kind of clientele do you wanna have. Do you wanna be a B2B or do you wanna be a B2C? Do you wanna be business to business transactions or do you wanna be business to customer transactions? Do you wanna work with individuals or do you wanna work with companies? And, and the way that you operate is actually very, very different. When you're working with a person, like a wedding couple, who doesn't have a marketing budget to spend, who doesn't know about return on investment, they're just trying to buy a product from an artist versus working with an airline or a hotel property or a fashion brand who has a marketing budget to spend for social media or for marketing or advertising. A very different way of thinking about money. One is trading money for another product which they're gonna to use to market a brand. One is actually working with consumers or customers who just want the product, they want the piece of artwork from you. And so the way they think about money is also very different. One thinks of it as very precious and, and something that they've spent all their life to earn to be able to afford this product. One is a business who wants to trade that money for more money. They're usually thinking that this product, that video, that photo that they're buying from you is gonna help them make more money. So they see it as an asset, as a way to develop their business further. So when you're thinking about what kind of clientele you wanna have, you also are thinking about what types of people you want to work with that also helps you develop a sensitivity around your own business and how to market your business to other people. So when you're thinking about what you wanna make, the business you wanna build, think about the clientele that you wanna have. Once you know who you're targeting, once you know what kind of clientele you wanna have and the business you wanna build, third most important thing is figuring out what the competition is like. Who are the other businesses that are doing what you want to do? Is it fierce, is it really contentious, or is it friendly? Can you find other collaborators that can help you in your journey? Understanding what the competition is like will also help to determine how good you need to be in order to sell your product. So understanding your competition also helps you get a gauge for how much your product should cost. So if you're in the market for a car and you know you want to buy a low-end car, you have a certain amount of money, then you know that you have a certain amount of competition. Like Kia does not compete with BMW for their clientele. And so understanding what kind of competition you want to be in, what kind of work you want to produce, all of that will help to inform what kind of product you want to make. So that leads me directly into point number four, which is determine the amount of investment you're willing to make into this business. 
Now there's so many things that you have to buy once you get into video. You can spend $500 on a GoPro or you know tens of thousand dollars on these cinema camera packages. But you also have to figure out how much clients are willing to spend. So if you're talking about individuals, you're talking about consumers who want to buy this product. They don't have tons of money. They don't have you know, millions of dollars of marketing and advertising budget to spend on these packages. So you have to understand your market. You have to understand what people are willing to invest in your product. And that'll help you know what you can invest in in your own business. So we've got cameras and lights and audio. We've got all kinds of marketing. We have an endless pool of investment that keeps going back into the business, but that has to directly relate to the amount of product that you sell. So if you're selling you know, $500, $1,000 video packages that take you two weeks, you end up actually making about a minimum wage you know, salary for all of the investment that you're making. So once you calculate all of the investment that you spend into building this thing, all of the time you invest in making amazing products, it has to also equate to a sustainable financial living for yourself. And that's where I think people get trapped in the beginning. They wanna make this a cool living for themselves. They wanna travel, they wanna be known as this like really cool, lifestyle, cinematographer, photographer, filmmaker, whatever that is, but they don't realize that there's a huge cost on actually turning this in to a sustainable business model for themselves. So you think about this, think about building maybe a maximum limit that you're willing to invest into this business and relate that directly back to how much money you're actually making. So as you're thinking about what kind of business you wanna develop, think about a maximum limit that you wanna invest in this business so that it can directly relate to how much income that you bring in, which is directly related to the type of clientele you wanna have and the business you want to make. The first four suggestions are all tips in how to build the business, the why behind what you wanna make. This fifth tip, is a little bit more community centric. Go and talk to people. There's so many people that are already making videos wherever you are. Go ask them what it's like to actually do this for a living. How hard is it to actually find clientele that are willing to pay you a reasonable amount of money to make the art that you wanna make? See if this is even a viable business. How open is this landscape for you to jump in? And do you have anything unique to contribute to this? If you're not building anything that's different than what anybody else is already making, that already has existing clientele that you're trying to target, it's gonna be really, really hard to get into the market. So make some friends, go out there, get on Instagram, get on Twitter, talk to people who are making the art you wanna make and actually connect with them. Not in a way to try to build contention or try to steal their clients, but really engage with them and find out what this video business is about. The best way to build something is to talk to people who've already built it. Get as close to the people who are making the thing you wanna make and go learn from them be their disciple, be their apprentice, be their next right hand man or woman so that you can learn what it actually takes to build a business. So by connecting with community, by seeing what other people make and actually seeing people in their process, you might figure out it's not something that you wanna do, which is equally valuable information to learn right out the gate. There's so many people that spend decades in careers that they hate just because they're already doing it. So by working for somebody, alongside somebody, you figure out what you love about it, what you hate about it, and whether or not you wanna invest your own time, money, effort, discipline into building this business at all. And this brings me to number six, probably the most practical. If you're not doing this yet, you have to do this. Go register as a business. In Hawaii, go to hawaii.gov. There's all the paperwork there. If you wanna be a DBA, which is doing business as your person, you can do that as a freelancer. Or if you wanna build an LLC, a limited liability corporation, so that you have some protection uh, in case anybody sues you. You have to build a structured organization, a business that you can then do taxes from, get insured with. Like these are all some of the basic fundamental things that you have to do as a business. So your state, your city, your country all have legal things that you need to do in order to be registered as a business. That's your next step. If you haven't gotten there yet, make sure you get your business registration done. Number seven is more housekeeping stuff. Once you're registered as a business, you can now go get a business checking account. So if you wanna start getting paid as an LLC or as a DBA or as your corporation, you have to have a business checking account. That gets linked to your tax ID, that gets linked to all of the things that register you as a business. You need to have a business money account to get paid as a business. Also, that's what helps keep your business finances separate from your personal. And you don't want those to intermix because they're very different when it comes to tax time. 
you have to keep all of those records separate and diligently monitored because all of these new expenses that you have, all of the camera purchases, all the light things, all of those expenses that you have as a business are now right offable on your taxes. That's a really important part and having a business checking account helps you partition that money away so you know exactly what you spent and how much you've made. And this goes into number eight. This is a big one that everybody misses. Insurance. You need insurance for your business. If your camera drops, who pays for it? You. If it's a $30,000 camera, that's a lot of pain. Your car breaks down, who pays for it? You. If it's not insured, it's a big deal. But if you don't have insurance, you can't get into number nine. Film permit. If you're a business in Hawaii, you want to be able to do creative things with your cinematography, your photography, you need to be getting a film permit. And the reason why is because if you don't have permission to shoot at a location, anybody can shut you down. Whether it's a lifeguard on a beach, a cop, a security guard, if you don't have the right permissions, you can't shoot on the premise. And you can't get a film permit from the state or the city and county or the feds unless you have insurance. From the state, you need a minimum of a $1 million liability policy. You also need vehicle insurance. From the feds, I think they've upped it up to two million. So if you wanna go and get a time lapse for your company, on Haleakala, you need $2 million of liability insurance just to get the park ranger to come up with you at sunrise, and you need to have your insurance in order to get that film permit. If you're not operating with film permits today, you're not operating like a business. And the reason I say that is because the first day that you get shut down on a client project when they're there, when you have talent, when you have crew, when you have all of that stuff and somebody comes by, shuts down your set, that's probably the last time you're working with that client. So making sure you have insurance is a big step. So make sure you get your insurance so that you can get your film permits and operate like a business wherever you are. This last tip, number 10, is more of a practical help. Look at the things that you want to make. Understand them, understand why they work. If it's commercials, go and watch tons of commercials. See what agencies are producing today. Go watch cinematographer reels and see what they're shooting, how they're shooting. Try and figure out what lenses packages they're using. Try and look at the color and see if they're using an Alexa or if they're using a Dragon or if they're using an A7 III. You can tell a lot by looking at other people's work. Then go make that. One of the best ways to see whether or not you can actually do this is to make what other people are making or getting paid to make that thing. When I first started out in this industry and I was interning in LA, we would do spec work all the time, whether it was for Sony or Nike or Toyota. We would build spots in hopes that they would either purchase them or hire us to do projects like that. And spec projects are really important because they help you to hone your craft. They help you to do things without the burden of a budget, without the necessity of a client, but they help get you into the same playing field as the top agencies in the state. If you can mimic exactly what's going on on camera, on screen, with talent, with the experience of it, then you know that you have something you can shop to potential clients. So if you want to be making commercials, if you want to be making documentaries, go and make that work. Go and make that work on your own, on your own dime, on your own time. So go make amazing work so that you can show it off. You can have a portfolio that looks like the thing that you want to be making for the rest of your life, the thing that you want to sell to other people. But what it also does, it helps to get you hired for the thing you want to make. So if you don't want to shoot events, if you don't want to shoot weddings, don't put that in your portfolio. Go make the things you want to make and market yourself as that. So a few years back, we started a series called Made Fresh. It featured artists and makers and talented people doing fresh things all over Hawaii. And that kind of became our spec work. That's the place that we wanted to start to go into. That's the type of cinematography we wanted to do. And I couldn't do that necessarily on my client's time or dime, so I did it on my own. I brought in my team, showed them how we shoot. It, it was a chance for them to learn how we shoot, the types of gear that we want to shoot on. So it became a great training ground, but it also became something of a portfolio lead-in. So clients now ask for that particular type of project, which is amazing, because that's the type of thing we want to make. Uh, we started off with event videos, we started off with experiential things, but we, we started making what we wanted to make and now we're known for that kind of thing. So that's what we get hired for. Doing spec work is the best way 
to get into the thing that you want to make. So those are the 10 tips. Those are 10 things that I think will help you think through what you're making, why you're making it, and what you're gonna go build in the future. If you have any questions, I would really love to answer them. Shoot me a direct message, shoot me a comment. In my almost 20 years of experience, we've gotten to see all kinds of things in this industry, and I'd love to share that experience with you. If you enjoyed this video, if you found any value in it, I would really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. If you want more of this content, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell if you want to be notified whenever we have a new video that drops. And I just want to hear from you guys. I want to hear if, if you like this stuff and, and you want more of it. I think we have some marketing videos that we want to do. We have some other brand stuff. We have other tech tips. We've got all kinds of fun things that we want to share. And, and I'd love to just hear if this is valuable for you guys at all. If it is, connect with me, let me know, and we will catch you on the next one. Aloha.